Hello, welcome back to Fragmental. Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions on two brand new fragrances for 2024, Paco Rabanne's Invictus Parfum and Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal Absolu. Should you buy them? Let's find out. Two brand new fragrances. There's a lot of fragrances getting released these days, so it's hard to know which ones to buy and which ones to swerve. I've recently tried Invictus Parfum and Scandal Absolute, two fragrances from two of the most popular designer brands, so there's probably a lot of you out there wondering if these fragrances are any good. I have tested both these fragrances on paper and I've worn them on my skin, so I'm going to share my first impressions. Please do bear in mind these are first impressions. I haven't worn these multiple days. It was based on one wearing on the skin and I do have have tester strips which I can still smell both these fragrances on but it is a first impressions. Let's start with Invictus Parfum. Notes are marine notes, lavender, pink pepper, black soap, violet leaf, myrtle, cashmere and musk and sandalwood. To me that looks like a pretty good set of notes. I would be excited on paper to look at the notes in Invictus Parfum and think this could be a pretty decent fragrance. And you know I like a fragrance that is bold enough to stand by its conviction. So based on its note breakdown, is Invictus Parfum bold enough to be as good as the notes suggest? Is it going to lean into each of these notes or each of these notes going to be in sharp enough focus to make this a really good fragrance? No. I mean it's it's all right. It's it's a pleasant, enjoyable fragrance. It's not what I wanted. The first spray was likable, but underwhelming. And I know I say that about a lot of designer fragrances, but a lot of designer brands do release likable, but underwhelming fragrances. They are leaning too much into the mass appeal sometimes and not being bold enough to create something that is still mass appealing, but still has character, still is a little bit original and distinctive. Sometimes the marketing can actually work against these fragrances because they put so much money into them. Designer brands have so much money to pour into an amazing video to market the fragrance. And you watch the video, you watch the trailer for this fragrance and it is this very rousing, dramatic video. It really gets you hyped up for the scent, for what you want it to be, for what it is suggesting the fragrance is gonna be. And the note breakdown as well promises something bold, something assertive, something bursting with gravitas. Unfortunately, I don't get those things. I get a pretty generic powdery scent. My little problem with this fragrance is that it doesn't own its marketing. It doesn't own its note breakdown. It doesn't live up to what it is hyping itself up to be. If I have a fragrance with marine notes, I want this bracing sea saltiness to hit me in the face like a wave in a stormy sea, kind of like this. You're giving me a lavender note, so give me lavender. Give me lavender like in Sauvage Elixir, which really owned its lavender note. I want the pepper to punch me in the face. I'm getting soapiness, but not just any soap, black soap. No idea what black soap is, but it sounds more badass than regular soap, so I want a badass soapiness. There's myrtle. Myrtle is a green herb that when done really well can have quite a sharp, bracing, almost bitter green herbal smell done beautifully in Aqua de Palma's Myrtle de Panarelli but here it, it's not standing out and that's my problem with this fragrance is not one aspect is in sharp enough focus to really stand out and it is just a bit of a, a blurry mushy quite generic scent it didn't have to be that way they could have really leaned into each of these notes and made them a little bit more distinctive in my opinion and I know we're talking Paco Rabanne here and they are the mainstream kings but I've recently mentioned in a video there latest iteration of One Million Golden Oud. In that fragrance, I felt that they were really pushing creative boundaries of what a mainstream designer brand should release. In fact, it was leaning more towards niche than designer. So Paco Rabanne are capable of creating a fragrance that is a little more creative. If they had approached Invictus Parfum with the same level of conviction that they did with Golden Oud, I would have really loved this fragrance. All right, in the interests of balance, this is not a bad fragrance. That's not what I'm saying. It's actually quite enjoyable. Nobody is going to be repulsed by you when you wear this fragrance. It is very wearable. It's likable. It's got mass appeal. It's a safe option. And I know that will work for many of you out there, but for me, it simply doesn't have enough conviction in its execution to warrant me buying it. Performance? is pretty good. That is one of the plus sides to this fragrance. It will last all day. I don't think projection is crazy, but it is projecting 
pretty decently. I really enjoyed Invictus Victory Elixir. I do prefer that one to this new Invictus Path Thumb. I wasn't offended by having this on my skin. My bank balance would be offended by spending £104 on a fragrance that I find a little lacklustre. Whenever I'm not massively positive about a fragrance, when I'm not raving about how good a scent is, I feel it's prudent to put things into a little bit of context. I've been in the fragrance game for quite a number of years now. I've got a massive amount of fragrances behind me here. I'm not an expert. I've never said that I am. I've never trained in perfumery. I'm just a guy who started talking about fragrances and I thought I would share my opinion on which ones I like and which ones I don't. And after years of smelling a lot of fragrances, going to exhibitions, visiting stores, smelling a lot, I feel like I've got a pretty good idea of what I like and what I don't and what is in the middle. I'd say Invictus Parfum is somewhere in the middle. But if you are newer to fragrances than me, if you've not smelled hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of fragrances, then you may find this fragrance works perfectly for you, which is why you should try to smell it if you can. Try to get into a store and smell it for yourself. Just because I'm saying I wouldn't buy it does not mean that you wouldn't buy it. If your fragrance tastes align with mine and you've been in the game for quite a few years, then maybe you'll have a good idea that this fragrance might not be for you. But if you're newer to fragrances, do smell this. You can only ever trust your own nose and no one else's. This is merely a video about my opinion, which is what this YouTube channel is all about. So smell it yourself, make up your own mind. If you love fragrance as much as I do, head over to my online store, luxparfum.co.uk. You'll find my favorite brands, plus brands you can't find anywhere else in the UK. Link is in the description. Woo! Moving on to Jean-Paul Gaultier's Scandal Absolute, and things are better here. I quite enjoy the Scandal line, although I don't find myself reaching for either of these fragrances that much. They're good, like I said, but there's just something about them that doesn't compel me to reach for them very often. They're not in my mind day to day. I've got a lot of fragrances to reach for, so things have really got to stand out. So whilst they are very good, they don't stand out above a lot of fragrances in my collection. But how about this new Absolute? It has notes of Mirabelle, which is a yellow plum-like fruit, chestnut, sandalwood. Vanilla is not listed, but I feel like there's a pretty good dose of it here. So the weird thing about Scandal Absolute is I smelled this in store and I formed an opinion of what sort of fragrance this was. And then I looked online at the marketing and the note breakdown and it didn't seem to align with what I was getting from the scent. Looking at the notes, it would indicate that this fragrance could be a rich, woody type of scent. There's chestnut in there. Fragrances with chestnut in, like the Stronger With You line, usually lean more towards autumn wear. So I thought it was gonna be perhaps a, a more robust autumnal style of fragrance, but I guess the fact that Jean-Paul Gaultier aren't releasing this just before autumn, they're releasing it just before summer, means that they feel it is a summer appropriate scent, which does match with what I feel like I get. It reminded me of Suntan Lotion. It's got that creamy coconut vibe to it. it Smell like a very solar type of scent. It's not an invigorating citrusy type of summer fragrance. It is one of those quite sensual, creamy suntan lotion type of scents to me. And I really like it. I really like that style of fragrance. I think it is a great alternative for the summer to not just have invigorating, explosive citrus fragrances. I, I do love those, but to have something that is a bit different to that is a good summer option. It does have a lot of similarities with the previous Scandals. It's got that Scandal DNA in there. However, I feel this one is a little lighter, a little creamier, a little more solar. So you get some of that Scandal DNA with some nice creamy vanilla and a little bit of suntan lotion. I might just be going crazy here. Maybe no one else is gonna get this slight suntan lotion thing, but I can't help what I get. And the fact that the brand are releasing this just before summer rather than just before the autumn makes me feel that they believe in this as quite a summer appropriate scent. The chestnut does become a little bit more prominent in the dry down. It does come out as the skin warms it up and as those top notes burn off and it does become a slightly heavier fragrance. I do think it is still appropriate for the summer, but you get this nice little bit of added, slightly darker, chestnutty and woody depth to it. Great one to get for the summer. Not super unique, but its intentions are more in focus than with Invictus Parfum, which is why out of the two fragrances, I do prefer 
the scandal. Performance is good, it lasts all day. The price on the 50mm is £84, the 100mm is £115. I have seen it cheaper here in the UK, Essential are selling the 50mm for £71 and I think that is definitely more sort of the price I'd want to pay than, than anything more than that to be honest. If you like a creamy, sweet, summery scent then I think you'll really enjoy this. Like I said, I did really enjoy it but I do have a few other fragrances, probably a bit better than this one already in my collection, so there is no need for me to buy this. If I bought it, I just probably wouldn't wear it enough, so I will not be spending the money on this, but if you don't have any other fragrances in your collection that sound like this one, then maybe it might be one you want to pick up. Get in store, try it, see what you think. You might get something completely different to me. It might work differently with your skin up your nose, but see what you think, try it for yourself. There we go, my thoughts on two brand new releases for 2024, and actually Jean-Paul Gaultier have got us pretty well covered for this summer because we can wear Le Beau Paradise Garden in the day and Scandal Absolute in the evening. Job done. If you've tried either of these fragrances, I would love to hear from you. So would everyone else watching this video, drop your opinions on these fragrances down in the comments. If you liked this video, you know what to do, give it a like, subscribe, if you haven't already, and if you do all that, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.